Hello, my creative friends. I'm Heather North from Heather'sCreativeBlessings.com. I am here with the release week of the new Stamp of Approval Holiday Magic Collection. I have two cards that I'm sharing today on my blog, and I will have links to the Stamp of Approval and other people that are also participating. But I wanted to show you how I made this particular card using one of the stamps from the set. What I have here is a piece of watercolor paper. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, but I'm going to end up cutting it down later. My first step is to create the little block backgrounds. So I have here a clear block. This is a Stampin' Up! Clear block and the Antique Linen Distress Ink. I'm just going to take my clear, clear block and squish it into my ink, then spritz it with a little bit of water. I then smush the block onto my paper and wiggle it around a little bit just to get the ink transferred. Doing it this way gives my piece a little bit more of a watercolor wash look instead of a solid look. And you see sometimes you'll get little drops where you don't intend them. I just picked that up. Um, it's okay if it's a little bit messy because I do want this messy technique. Again, what I did was I smushed it into my ink, spritzed it with water, smushed it onto my paper. If you want a more solid background image, what you can do is just skip the step where you spritz it with water. I'm going to set this piece aside to dry. And through the magic of YouTube, it's now dry. <laughs> and now I'm going to take, um, oh, I want to show you this. I wasn't really sure of the colors and how it would react with the watercolor paper because sometimes colors look different on there than they do on regular paper. So what I did was I just took a scrap and played with it. I played with layering the colors and how the colors work together. The stamp set I'm using is called Holiday Flourish. It's from the Ton. It is included in the Stamp of Approval Holiday Magic Collection. I'm going to start with the biggest leaf. It's a solid image. These um, leaves come in solid and also the outline. And I'm going to ink it up with the Shabby Shutters Distress Ink and stamp it in the middle of each square. And I'm going to move it a little bit each time so that each of these little, I'm going to call them hollyberry clusters, will look a little bit different. Then I'm just going to take a wet brush and I'm going to, actually this is an aqua painter, and you could just squeeze the water out of it, but to get a little more control, I'm dipping it into a little cup of water. And I'm painting over that leaf image. And by doing this with the Distress Ink and the watercolor paper, that ink is going to move and blend and kind of smooth out the color and give it a really uh, pretty wash. I'm just going to repeat this process with the smaller leaves, same ink, and um, just offsetting them, changing them each time. But I'm going to stamp one small leaf on each side of my bigger leaves, trying to keep them somewhat inside of my squares. out mode lawn distress ink and I'm going to ink up the outline stamps and just stamp over each of these leaves it does not have to be perfect because this is a very um, flowy look that I'm going for then I'm going to again take my aqua painter and blend it together it's not going to blend perfectly but this just softens it a little and adds to the overall look that I'm going for Here's what it looks like now that I'm done um, painting those. I'm going to set that aside to dry and work on the border strip that I'm going to be adding. I have here another clear block. It just happens to be long and skinny. This one is called Fired Brick. 
and I'm inking up my clear block, spritzing it with water, and then I'm going to stamp on my watercolor paper. Now the watercolor paper was spritzed with water as well, so that ink really flows and moves. And I realize right now it kind of looks like a bloody mess. I'm sorry, that looks kind of disgusting. But once it dries, it will look much better, and I've got one more step to add to it to make it really look good. One thing you can do if you don't like how it looks is just take a damp brush, well, any kind of brush, and brush out some of those strips. And see here, this is what it looks like when it dries. It's not quite so bad as the wet version. I sure hope it's okay to show you this full stamp set because I am pulling off some of the flourishes in this set. I just love any kind of flourish. So this stamp set really speaks to me. Um, I'm just going to ink it up in some Golden Blitz Delicata ink. It's a pigment ink. And I'm going to move my stamp and stamp down the strip. Now, the ink, like I said, is completely dry. You don't want to necessarily put this onto a wet strip. If you do, the pigment ink will really move and flow with it. And see, the light hits it, and it's just so pretty. It's hard to capture on camera, but it just adds that little special touch when you give it, give the card to somebody in person. I'm going to take a couple more little flourishes and dots from the stamp set and finish up my strip. My leaf clusters have had some time to dry. They're not completely dry yet though. Um, if you want a sharper image, you would wait for it to completely dry, but I am going for a watercolor wash. So I have here the little trio of berries. I'm just inking it up in the fired brick ink and I'm stamping off on my grid mat and then stamping on the cardstock. And what this does, it's a second generation stamping and it just gives a little bit lighter look to it. Then I'm going to go in with my aqua painter and color in those berries. Again, it just gives it a softened look by doing this. At this point, I'm impatient to finish the card. So I am just going to take my heat tool and try and heat set those berries and the leaves. Because I'm going to go in with the outline stamp and outline them and I don't want it to um, flow together too much since I am using the same color ink, that fire brick distress ink. I took that red strip and just cut it in half so these are like half inch strips um, my panel, my watercolor panel is cut down to three and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I've got some Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, folded in half. And then I'm going to take the Merry Christmas Sentiment. This is also from the Holiday Flourish stamp set. And I'm going to ink it up with Early Espresso Ink from Stampin' Up! My ink pad is a little bit dry, so as I'm stamping it here on my grid mat, I notice that it's just not as dark as I want it to be. So I'm going to pull out my Misty and use that to, to ink this up, because this way I can stamp it over and over again and get a really good dark impression. After putting all that work into the watercolor piece, I don't want to mess it up at this point. So um, I have the little magnets that come with the Misty. I'm just lining the paper up in the bottom of, bottom corner of my Misty, and I'm going to put some magnets over my piece just to hopefully keep it from moving. But really, it's okay if it does shift because I'm just going to have it in that bottom right-hand corner. I lay my stamp down where I want it to go. And I'm just making sure that it's in a straight line, but also that it has the same distance of white space on either side of my sentiment. Close the lid that picks up the stamp. And then I'm going to ink it up again with that early espresso ink. And if I need to do it a couple of times, I can just redo it and it will stamp in the same position every time.
there are several ways you could finish off this card. I am just going to adhere my watercolor panel to my red strip. I'm lining it up on my grid mat to get the lines straight and I'm letting just a quarter of an inch show off to the side. Then I will repeat that for the other side. I just used some sharp paper snips to snip that off. I'm using snail adhesive here, but you could also, if you've got a lot of warpage in your um, cardstock, you could use some glue. And then after you're done adhering it, put something heavy, a big heavy book. If you've got any old college books, that's great, or dictionary or something heavy on top of it to just flatten it out as it dries. little red strips were just sitting there on the table and I thought hmm, maybe they'll look good on the inside of my card. So again I just took some snail adhesive and adhered them to the top and bottom of the inside of my card. I will stamp a sentiment inside later but I didn't have my little bobbles and bits stamp set. Bright bobbles that's what it's called. The bright bobbles stamp set nearby but that one of those sentiments will work great inside of here. Um, so my final step is just to add a little bit of sparkle to those berries. Uh, you could use some red stickles. I have a Stampin' Up's version, Cherry Cobbler. I don't even know what they're called. Dazzling Details, maybe? I'll have to look it up. But I just squirted a little bit into the inside of each of those three berries. And my card number one is done. I hope you have enjoyed looking at this little sneak peek of some of the products in the holiday collection, Holiday Magic Collection from Stamp of Approval. I've got another video, so be sure and click my subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube so that you don't miss it, or um, click below on the blog post and I will have both videos up there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you find some time to get creative and I hope you're one of the lucky ones who gets in on this new box.